welcome in. Why do people say that, welcome in? I guess to invite you into this space, I guess. I don't even know why I just said that. Today's audit is going to be about that fella right there and something that he allegedly wrote. Or at least was a co-author of. He definitely took authority of it. Now, if you don't know who this guy is, his name is full colon, Mark, hyphen, lowercase k, Cashone, colon, space, Christopher, full stop. And the history of this guy goes back quite a few years in the domain of quantum grammar, or with its correct name, Correct Sentence Structure Communication Parsley Syntax Grammar, in that he became a adherent, I guess you could say, of the technology back in 2014-15-ish, 16-ish, maybe. He attended a seminar given by Colin Russell, Ivan J. Colin Gould, when Russell was still business partners with Colin David Ivan Wayne Colin Miller. And he was in the audience. It's a very famous six-hour seminar, very informative seminar, if you can find it on YouTube. And he's also, his name is on that quantum media treaty that was created during that seminar. But that's neither here nor there. After he did that and he met with Russell J. Gould, he began teaching, or I guess alleging to teach correct sentence structure communication parsley syntax grammar because that's how I found them. In 2017, I found a four-hour, I think, seminar of his titled The uh, Tricks and Traps of the Court or something like that. And I was intrigued and I didn't see anyone else out there teaching or even claiming to teach quantum grammar. So I contacted him and it was about, I don't know, 30-some pounds for one class with him and he taught 12 week courses 12 classes so I joined in about halfway through on one of his courses and then uh, after that was over I was still intrigued so I took the full 12 week course in you know during that time I met my tutor colon raven hyphen farhide hyphen tohidi colon afarin and the rest is history there I got closure on the grammar through, uh, mainly through Raven. But uh, I was also privy to some private seminars with Colin David Ivan Colin Miller, and I was also blessed to have had conversations with Colin David Ivan Colin Miller uh, via cell phone, Skype, uh, text messages, emails, so on and so forth. And it wouldn't have happened if. I hadn't at first contacted that guy and enrolled in his courses. But what I found out is that this guy wasn't what he seemed because he did not have closure on the grammar. And I have from very trusted sources who have met him face to face that he has no idea how to syntax. He just doesn't know how to do it. He doesn't grasp it. And he even, he even admits that in a video he published on YouTube with Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller where he said he has no idea how to syntax. <laughs> he admits it. So I quickly found that out and that's why I started learning with uh, Colin Raven because that guy doesn't have closure on the grammar. So it wasn't too much of a surprise to me when I found out he had been arrested. Now I found this out last year. I didn't go public with it or anything like that because I don't like to cast aspersions on people. But I figured, you know, someone who's out there claiming they're doing something that they're not, meaning he's claiming to teach correct sentence structure when he's quite obviously he's not, he doesn't know it, that's got to catch up with you sooner or later. It has to. And it did. So he and three other individuals have been arrested on attempted kidnapping charges. I'll let you delve into that all you want to. 
my volition here is to look at the paperwork involved in the kidnapping case, supposedly written by that guy right there. So I'm going to pull it up. So right away, you see this has nothing to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. This is the flag, if that's what it is, in the upper port side corner. You have this word private, which is no contract. PRI is no contract. Centered. But then you have a full colon, and then you have veritas hyphen fides hyphen candor hyphen firmitas hyphen flag. What even is that? Is that English? Plain simple English? Is it Latin? What is it? Are we mixing our languages here? Nothing wrong with that. But if it is your volition to be cognized, or to use a fiction term, if it is your volition to be understood, why would you do that? Something to keep in mind. So there's a little bit of mixing going on here. But make no mistake, this is not correct sentence structure. It is not. Reason being, if you write a whole ass document in adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, and then you put something like this on here, it's BS. Either the whole thing is correct sentence structure or it's not. And if the rest of the document is adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, you would have to give closure to that and syntax it. You'd have to put syntax values on here and syntax every single adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun sentence and give closure to the syntax key. But we don't see that here. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is not correct sentence structure. If this were sitting by itself, this particular statement, which is for the veritas hyphen fides hyphen candor hyphen firmitas hyphen flag period, if that were on a piece of paper by itself, left justified, then yes, it is correct sentence structure. But here, in this context, it is not. So I'm going to go through this. I mean, this is going to be a long video, so I'm going to go through this. Uh, uh, I'm going to withstand as much of it as I can. It's all adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. Opening statement by congruence. So congruence is the authority of this document. Whatever that means. In everyday language, truth and the facts are spoken interchangeably as if they are one and the same thing. Truth, true, truce, and trust are not facts. In the context of correct sentence structure, no, they're not. Because they have not been positioned with a position lodial phrase. But in this context, written by someone who has no closure on the grammar... They're just giving you their opinion. Because I can show you something. I can show you the difference between truth and fact. As you can plainly see here, fact of this finite mean is with this claim of this contract, with the cognition of this whole, with the value of the matter, with the certification by the contract parties, period. And then truth is for the truth of this finite mean is with the claim of this lens, with the shape of the cognition pattern, with the light sensory function by this claim. Do you see the difference? Truth is contingent upon a lens. Fact is contingent upon a contract. That's the difference. So my truth for example, I could say that ghosts exist. Through my lens, my personal lens, I see ghosts exist. 
And then I come to you and say, ghosts exist. And then you say, prove it. I say, well, I have this video. And then I show you a video and it's all grainy, you know, like those types of videos usually are. They're pixelated and stuff and say, that, that's a ghost. That's a ghost right there. And then you say, nah, that's BS. I don't believe you. That's So a ghost is a truth for me, but it's not a fact for you because facts are contingent upon contract. And you and I don't have a contract for ghosts because you don't agree with me. And contract is by consent. Do you see the difference? That's the difference. Theoretically. Quite literally, in correct sentence structure, a ghost can be a fact if you put a position lodial phrase in front of it. But you better be able to prove it. Because if you can't prove it with evidence, convincing evidence, just the same way that I can prove that this is a cup, then no one's going to contract with that. Just thought I'd put that out there. All you folks out there who use terms like God and the devil and good and evil, keep that in mind. If we break down the word woman, woman means man with a womb. Okay, where's the certification of that? Let's look it up. Woman, in the etymology dictionary, is an adult female human. Literally, woman, man, alteration of wife, man. Woman, female, servant, compound of woman. See, wife plus man, wife, woman, man. Formation is peculiar to English and Dutch. The pronunciation, uh, lady, is in loose and especially polite usage, a woman. This is a no, this noble word is in America banished. 1837. Misogyny, womanize. Clergy woman. Well, lady. This is a little supplementary data here. Mistress of a household, wife of a lord, one who needs bread. Don't we all need bread, bro? Seriously, gluten. Uh, maker of dough. Got to get that dough, though. All right. What I'm looking for here, folks, all jokes aside, is any hint that woman has anything to do with a womb. I just don't see it. So let's look up the word womb and see if that helps. Belly, bowels, heart, uterus, wambo. <laughs> Hysterical. What? <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, there you go. The best that I can come up with is that this statement, woman means man with a womb, is made entirely on presumption assumption. It's something that the author of this document came up with out of the blue. Because there is no etymological evidence of that that's readily available to you and I. Now, if you're talking about some secret obscure, arcane etymological dictionary that not everyone has access to, then it means nothing to me and it means nothing to anyone else 
simply because it's not readily available. We have to use what's readily available to everybody because that's fair. That's rule one, rule equal. That's how stuff works. So Mark Sean Christopher may think that that's what a man, that's what a woman means, but that's not what it means in the common sense, according to the commonly available etymology dictionary. Anyways, let's just skim through this, see if I can find anything of interest. All right, I see this is all, wow, this is, uh, this is all totally conspiracy theory type stuff. Nothing to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, at all. This is all opinion. The global warmers staged a war over the novelty science of a global coolers. So much, op okay, summary. Let's read the summary. Wow. With the verification we provide you, you have the power to arrest anyone that tries to harm you or the people. Your own sense of responsibility and duty compels you to arrest anyone that tries to harm you or the people. Right there. So, by following those, you know, 40 and 41.1, Mark and three other folks have now been in jail for over a year because they thought that they could do that. Well, they're wrong. I can see a few different things wrong with that. Yes, of course, you have the power to arrest anyone you want to. Arrest is no contract, by the way. You have that power if you think you're powerful enough. But as David Wynn Miller once said, you can only hold what you can keep. So if you're going to go out and do something like that, whether it's to a county coroner or whomever, what do you think is going to happen next? Do you think the fiction system law enforcement officers are just going to stand by and let you do whatever you want? They're going to let you capture, kidnap, apprehend, arrest another individual for reasons such as this that cannot be proven? No. No. You're going to end up in jail a lot right alongside Mark and, and uh, his, his followers. That's not how this stuff works. And saying that you take responsibility for the people is a complete assumption, presumption, predicament. Because if I'm to be considered part of the people, I never consented for you to do anything on my behalf. That's why I always say, folks, it's up to each individual to make choices for themselves. It's up to each and every one of us individually to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, if we want to attain autonomy and learn the correct way of going about things with the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, the position of peace and neutrality, and the balance of the honor and the grace. Not like this using fiction BS against fiction BS, this is as bad as anything the fiction could ever do to anybody because this is fiction. By studying this document, you become the plenipotentiary judge of this document. Oh my goodness, so you mean I don't have to pay thousands and thousands of pounds to become, to buy a plenipotentiary judge title? I can just read this document and now I'm a plenipotentiary judge? of this document, that's amazing. That's amazing. The following words are all contractual words, the meanings of which we have gone through great length to educate, gone to great lengths to educate you. Well, every word is a contract word. Everything is contract. If you use tick any box or fill out any form using contractual words such as black man, woman, person, you are openly advertising and describing yourself as being dead in mind, body, and spirit. Zombified. 
Goodness gracious. Your duty is to stop and correct them by all means necessary. Black man, slave or dead. Black universally means dead. Okay, so, folks, this individual is not speaking for everyone. They're speaking for themselves and their little cult of followers. That's what it means for them. They may all agree that that's what that means. But is it what it means? Let's find out. So black, absolutely dark, absorbing all light, the color of soot or coal. To burn, from Proto-Indo-European, to burn, gleam, shine, flash. Blaze, glow, burn. From Proto-Indo-European root B-H-E-L, to shine, flash, burn. Pale, bright, shining, fire. Absence of color. Colorless, dark complexion. The meaning fierce, terrible, wicked is from late 14th century. Gloomy, unlucky, bad, wicked, malicious, dark purposes. Dark purposes, malignant, emerged in the 1580s, necromancy. So negative connotations of the word black only came out later. But in Old English and Proto-Indo-European, it just means to burn, gleam, shine, flash. So again, Mark Lowercase K is picking and choosing his closures on things. Telling you that a word means something when, yeah, I mean, at one point in time it did mean something, but later on down the line when it was modified to mean something other than what it originally meant. See what I'm saying here, folks? Black equals dead is completely incorrect. And I didn't see anything in Etymology Dictionary that connects black with dead, just like I didn't see anything that connects woman with womb, man with a womb. So this Mark Lowercase K seems to be completely full of horse dookie, if you know what I mean. Well, now he's just regurgitating common law stuff. Uh, sovereign, quote unquote, citizen type stuff. Going into the N word. Going into, oh man, he's been using that death pledge mortgage mantra for years and years and years. Uh, so these is all these are all opinions, all opinions. Yet I'm sure some folks think that this is the be-all, end-all of what words mean. So what I would like to do is go all the way down to the end of this. All right. Now he brings in Colon David Ivan Wynn Colin Miller. And look what he's done with David's middle name. This is, again, need I reiterate, this is not correct sentence structure. None of this has anything to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Nothing. Miller did his utmost best to educate and protect the world from fiction. For this, his life was taken. Again, opinion. Is that why his life was taken? Does anybody know about David's age, his lifestyle, his diet, anything like that? Does anybody know anything? Because, folks, I, I know a little bit about that. I was in contact with him for the last year of his life. I am also in contact with others who were friends with him and knew him personally. And I would have to say that there were probably some other things that contributed to his ill health other than they. When a good man's life is lost because of fictional infiltration, fiction must be purged. Well, the purging has begun because Mark is in jail. Um, 
Okay, here we go. This is the part that I wanted to bring to your attention. These are the folks that are part of or are, are willing to credential themselves as being part of Mark Cashon Christopher's little group. Mark Lowercase K. Cashon Christopher, Sean Andrew Dudley, Harper, Shiza, Harper, Rodrigo de Souza, Rabiro, Bonnie Beatrice Brooks, Craig McPherson, Judge, Ion Onica, Carrie Tapio Javisto, Liam John Costello, Gabriel Mary Bishop, Roland Sattler, Maney Camilla, Anderson Matthew Dean Martin, Janine Linehan, Christina Martin Frazzo, Roland Wilhelm Baffin, Martina Baffin, and Mark Nadolny must come for the wrongdoers in order to punish them where appropriate, death sentences are authorized. Folks, whose name comes at the bottom here? Mark Lowercase K. Cashon Christopher. Red thumbprint. A graph of his autonomy. He is the authority of this document. And what did he authorize? Death sentences are to be, are authorized. He's the author. He's telling these folks right here that they are authorized to kill people. Punish people and kill people. Does this remind you of something? I mean, Charles Manson comes to mind here. Jim Jones, Heaven's Gate, dare I say Russell J. Gould? Now, Russell J. Gould has never, ever done gone to these lengths. He has never said anything about that I know of killing anyone. However, Russell has gone out in public in videos and authorized bounty hunters or bounty seekers to arrest people. Matter of fact, there was a warrant for my arrest, which Mark also put out a warrant for my arrest, I guess. I don't know. But I guess there's a warrant for my arrest from Russell for the bounty seekers to come and get me. And since Mark has done the same thing, I guess I better be on the lookout for all the folks on this list because not only they might come to punish me, but they might come to kill me. As... Uh, individual known as Captain Spaulding once said, if you're going to come to kill me, you better make sure I'm all the way dead. <laughs> After all that doom and gloom, I figured I want to go to the beach to finish this out because it's all fun in the sun from here, folks. It really is. It's not fun in the sun for Mark and his cohorts because they're in jail. They're in prison. And they're probably going to be going away for a few years. Now, keep this in mind. The most vocal person, the guy who was the authority of that adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble document that I shared with you, Mark Cashon Christopher, the guy that authorized the death sentences, he's the one that kept his mouth shut during the court hearing. He didn't talk. The only folks who did the talking were his students. Now, I'm quite sure that knowing the way the authorities do their, um, by authorities, I mean fiction authorities, do their work, I'm sure they separated all four of those folks worked on him, questioned him. And I'm sure they found out all sorts of interesting stuff about Mr. Mr. Mark, lowercase k, Kishon Christopher. And it's as I've been saying for years. How can you go on claiming to do something that you're really not doing? 
and making all kinds of money on it. Thousands and thousands of pounds and dollars based upon a scam. How, how can you do that? You can't. It's got to give somewhere. So I don't know what happened to Mark Lowercase K. When I first began communicating with him, he seemed like an okay guy. But he did seem very distant. And it was sort of an enigma. Couldn't really get close to him. When someone did get close to him, they found out exactly what he was about. At least back then, he was about this. He wanted to make money. As the years went on, and this is pure speculation, folks. This is a guess on my part. Maybe he began believing in the bullshit that he was selling. Maybe he started believing to the point where he stopped even trying to use quantum grammar. Like, maybe he figured, well, I'm never going to learn this. I don't have closure on it. So, so why should I even attempt it? I'll just use plain, simple English. And so as the years go on, you can look at his website and look at the dates of the documents and videos and things like that. You notice he gradually stops attempting to use quantum grammar and just resorts to plain, simple English and not even using the correct sentence structure flag. So maybe he started believing in his own BS and it got him tripped up. Everybody else was, you know, that was paying money to be his student and being part of his, his uh, biosphere. They all believed in it. So I guess at some point, in order to be convincing, you have to believe your own BS. You have to buy into it. And then this is what happens in the end. It comes back to bite you. Folks, that's why I do things the way I do things. Because I can prove everything that I claim grammatically. I don't claim anything else other than grammar and correctness of said grammar. Yes, I teach confidential workshops, but everything I teach in the workshops is available for free on this YouTube channel in over 900 videos. It's all available for free. That's the safeguard I keep in place. Because I'm not going to sit here and say, well, you have to pay me this amount of money to learn the secrets of quantum grammar. No, no, no. There are no secrets. It's all out here in the public on my YouTube channel. And that's probably why folks like Russell don't really care for me. Well, I don't actually know if he doesn't care for me or not. I have no idea how he personally feels. I do know how his minions and his followers feel because I have had many run-ins with them and they're not very nice. They have foul mouths. And they're basically, yes, men and women who don't have any closure on the grammar. And I would never contract with any of them anyways. Because number one, I don't contract with folks who have a warlike volition. And number two... I stay as far away from authoritarian followers and bootlickers as I can. And by bootlickers, I mean that in every sense of the word. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. And I'll see you in the next one.